discuss all of this with Republican Senator Lindsey Graham of South Carolina. Senator, th thanks for the time. Thank you. So first, let's start with North Korea. This news mm -hmm. that Barbara was just telling us about, the commercial yeah. jet passing within miles of the yeah. North Korean missile yeah. test. What do you say about that? Well, I don't think there's an upside to North Korea having an ICBM for anybody, including Air France. So for 20 years, Kate, we have threatened the North Koreans. We have sanctioned them. We have sent Madeleine Albright to dance with Kim Jong-il, uh, the father of the current leader. Nothing's worked. The garbage regard is piling up regarding North Korea. President Trump has drawn a red line when it comes to North Korea. He has said very directly to me and others and publicly he will not allow them to get an ICBM that would be nuclear tip to hit the American homeland and he'd use military force if he had to to stop it and that's where we're headed if they don't stop. Well, when discussing this yesterday, you, you took some heat for your comments um, that you know, <laughs> basically a war with North Korea is inevitable if they continue with their um, yeah. trying to enhance our missile program. Retired right. General Spider Marks, a CNN contributor, he, yeah. he called it your comments unfortunate. Senator yeah. Dianne Feinstein, she said this to yeah. MSNBC. Listen to this. My reaction is that Lindsey Graham should get a classified briefing like the ones I have had and sit down with um, Secretary Mattis, which I have done. Senator Graham, do you stand by your assessment here? Oh, absolutely. I like the general a lot. He's a fine man, and Diane Feinstein's a terrific senator. But it's their kind of thinking that's gotten us to here. For 20 years, it's this kind of thinking that's allowed uh, North Korea to have dozens of nuclear weapons, not just one. They're going to have dozens of missiles if somebody doesn't stop them. They'll have a hydrogen bomb one day if somebody doesn't stop them. I like Secretary Tillerson. His job is to find a diplomatic solution. I hope he can. But when he says North Korea is not our enemy, tell that right. to Otto Warmbier's family. So I think this whole approach that they're talking about has failed. It's time for a new approach. We need to let China know that we will pick our homeland uh, defense over regional stability if we have to choose between an ICBM in the hands of the North Koreans and a conflict uh, in the region. We're going to choose the conflict to protect the American homeland and quite frankly President Trump has no other choice because everybody before him has failed. But have you heard a clear message on this from no. the from the administration? I mean, you, you cite yeah, Rex Tillerson right. and then right. you've got the president, the commander in chief, right. which is unclear where we are. Yeah. So I've heard a clear message from the president. Secretary uh, Mattis, uh, you've got a clip there when I ask him, is it the policy of the Trump administration? to deny North Korea an ICBM, ICBM capability at the home landing said it was, not to contain the threat, but to deny it. So Secretary Tillerson's trying to convince the Chinese and North Koreans that we don't want regime change. We're not trying to unify the peninsula. I get that. But if John Kerry had said what he said, we'd be all over him. So I think it was an artful. We need to send a clear message to North Korea You think what China. Tillerson said was unartful? Yes. I think we should have a clear message that this threat's not going to mature to the point that it can hit America with a nuclear-tipped ICBM, that if we have to use military force, we will. And I don't believe North Korea will ever change until they believe America is serious about the military option. The military option would be devastating. The last president who drew a red line against a, yeah. a, a dictator was Obama against Assad. 400,000 people have died when he refused to enforce it. So I think President Trump has no other choice. He's got to pick homeland security over regional stability. And the way to end this is to have China convince the North Koreans to stop their missile program, which is a direct threat to is us. Doing that, can you do that with trade restrictions? Uh, I think that's, let's do everything short of war that we can. The military option should be the last option. But here's what I do believe. How uh, close are we to the military option? What's your I assessment? don't know. I don't know. I know this, that Trump will do it if he has to. No president can allow this guy Kim Jong-un to get a missile to hit America with a nuclear weapon on top. That would be incredibly irresponsible. Let's try sanctions on China. Let's do whatever we can. Madeleine Albright went over to dance with a guy. That didn't work. Dennis Rodman, that didn't work. Sanctions haven't worked. The only thing that will work is if they believe this president will use military force to protect America. And if they believe that, I think we'll get a different outcome. And it's up to President Trump to deliver a very firm, unequivocal, uh, a message to North Korea and China, and Secretary Tillerson's job is to find a dip diplomatic solution. I would suggest that what he said about North Korea was uh, at best inartful. At best, what is it at worst? 
Uh, I think it gives mixed messages and they continue to believe we're not serious. I know what a military attack would look like in North Korea. It would be horrible, it would be right. devastating, and at the end of the day, that may be the only option left to protect the American homeland. I want to create two bad options for China. One option China has is to deal with this nut uh, on their border, which is unpleasant. The other option is to deal with a massive uh, U.S. attack to protect the American homeland, which would be even more unpleasant. They need to have bad options, not just us. Well, Senator, let me also ask you about this, another uh, international issue, um, Russia. The president, yes. we've learned this morning, signed the president signed yeah. the Russia sanctions bill. Um, right. He's made a big <laughs> show of signing even executive orders right. in the past, yeah. um, right. ever since taking right. office. This was signed, no notice, no cameras, <clears throat> as long as, I, as far as I can see, and no fanfare. What does right. that tell you? I think it. I think it's <clears throat> one. I'm glad he signed the bill. When we'd override the veto if he hadn't signed it, so I'm yeah. glad he did. I want to compliment him for that. But Secretary Tillerson is. Uh, said some things about Russia that are unnerving. He he's basically says it's a mistake to sanction Russia. It hurts his ability to re-engage Russia. Well, I can only tell you that the Congress, President Putin has done something that nobody else in America could do, unite the Congress. So the fact he does this kind of quietly, I think, reinforces the narrative that the Trump administration is not really serious about pushing back on Russia. And I think that is a mistake, too, because Putin will see this as a sign of weakness. On the Russia investigation, the White House has now confirmed that the president weighed in on the initial statement that was yeah. put out by Don Jr. about that meeting with the Russian lawyer. Yesterday, right. before all that was confirmed, you said that if it was true, it would be a really bad decision by the president. And right. you said, when you get caught in a lie, it makes it harder to let the other stuff go. How problematic is it now that it's confirmed it was true? Well, if he, in fact, uh, was involved in drafting the statement on Saturday, uh, which was completely misleading about the actual meeting, uh, then he has reinforced the narrative that uh, you have to look harder when, when, when he speaks about Russia. If he knew the email existed, which clearly was an offer by an intermediary to have the Russian government help the Trump campaign, it really wasn't about adoption. If he knew that email existed and he was part of drafting the statement, then that was incredibly misleading to the American public. I think it put his son uh, in jeopardy and it sends yet another signal uh, that when it comes to Trump and Russia that, that he's not resolved to deal with them. Uh, at the end of the day, Russia sees all this as a sign of weakness. The Congress is united, we're strong. If President Trump got firm in his response to Russia would see change. Here's well, what's let me ask you one more thing about one more thing about Russia actually yeah. that we're just learning about this morning. Politico is yeah. reporting that speaking yeah. of Secretary Tillerson yeah. that he's resisting pleas is how they wrote it. Maybe it's threatening to yeah. um, threatening to not use to stop using right. to cut off like 80 million dollars basically right. worth of uh, money that was allocated by yeah. Congress right. to combat Russian disinformation and terrorist right. propaganda. This is something you were really involved in. What's your reaction to that if it's true? Well, uh, one, I'm going to write him a letter. I'm not going to base my uh, decision on a news article. Senator Leahy, the ranking Democrat, Democrat, and I will write to Secretary Tillerson. I created this account. It's an account to allow frontline states like the Baltic states, Georgia, the Ukraine, to fight back against Russian interference in their economy and their democracy. They're under siege by Russia. We're trying to help our allies. If the Secretary of State says, I don't want to use this money, then that's just yet another sign that when it comes to Russia, we're incredibly weak. I can't figure this out. Uh, maybe the article is what wrong. What does it we'll add find up to? Out. If it's true, what does this all add up to? It I makes mean, one wonder. It makes one wonder why the Trump administration is so different than everybody else on Russia. That's what it adds up to me. The president is right on North Korea to draw a red line so our homeland can never be attacked with a nuclear-tipped missile. He is right to rebuild the military. Uh, he is doing a lot of things right as commander-in-chief. But when it comes to Russia, I'm glad he signed the legislation. But what Tillerson is saying about the sanctions, this idea I may not use money to help yeah. uh, democratic states under siege by Russia, adds up to a signal that we are really not serious in the Trump administration of dealing with Russian interference in uh, our home, here, here in our backyard and abroad, and that just invites more aggression. Um, you serve on the Armed Services Committee, of course. Yeah. You're a big supporter of the, of the military. The president announced the ban on all transgender people from serving in the military right. exactly a week ago today. Yeah. The Pentagon has yet to receive any formal policy memo right. 
from the White House on exactly what he means. Do you think right. the members of the military deserve some guidance on what their commander in chief is talking about here? Uh, yes, I think we should not act until we get a report back from the uh, Department of Defense. You we think they'll draw them. it back? That report, I think, till, uh, I think Mattis said it wasn't going to be ready till December. Do you think he should? Do you think Trump should retract it? Well, I'll leave that up to the president. I know this, that the Congress is not going to act until we get the information. I don't know why he sent out the tweet. I don't know why you would tweet something like that before, uh, until you first talk to the military. All I can say is that General Kelly, as chief of staff, was a great choice by President Trump. I want to help President Trump deal with North Korea, rebuild the military, cut taxes, and try to find a way to fix health care. Right, but Senator, General Kelly is not, going to stop, is not going to stop the president from tweeting. Well, all I'm saying is that General Kelly has been a calming influence. I'm looking forward, not backward. We're not okay. going to change transgender policy based on a tweet. If there's a change, it'll be based on facts and circumstances and recommendations from the Department of Defense. We're going to be very professional. You know, I think thousands of transgender military service members, we're not going to pull the rug out from under them. We're not going to do that this way. A lot of news we didn't even get to with all of that, Senator. Thank you <laughs> yeah, very much for your time. I thank really you. appreciate it. Thank you.